Hello students, welcome to Year 11 Chemistry and the Drivers of Reactions topic. This is video number nine and it's the second one of our applications of Hess's Law, this time looking at the process of photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is a critically important process for life on Earth. It's how the oxygen in the atmosphere originally built up and it's a very, very important process for all green plants uh, in order for them to produce the energy source, glucose. And as the beginning of most food chains, they also are the ones that are going to contribute very important energy to other uh, life on Earth. The process of photosynthesis involves uh, two important reactants, carbon dioxide and water. It produces the energy rich molecule glucose and also, uh, carbon, uh, and also oxygen as a product. Photosynthesis occurs in the presence of sunlight, and that's telling us a little something about the energy requirements, and hopefully we can, we can link that in later on in this video. And it also requires chlorophyll. In fact, this is a very complex process. And because it's a very complex process, it's a difficult one for us to study unless we have an alternate way of doing so. And of course we do. If we look at the application of Hess's law, we can actually get to a value which represents the value of the enthalpy change during photosynthesis. To do that, we need to introduce another concept here, the concept of standard enthalpy of formation. And I've taken this definition from the textbook Chemistry in Focus. The standard enthalpy of formation or the heat of formation is the increase in enthalpy when one mole of a compound in its standard state is formed from its elements in their standard states. Now, one of the important things about this particular uh, reaction is that oxygen is in its elemental state. So we don't have to worry too much about that. We can actually assume that the energy uh, requirement for the oxygen is zero. But we need to look at carbon dioxide and water and also glucose if we're going to understand this reaction. So here are three equations. The first one represents the enthalpy of formation of water, and it's one that we have looked at in the past. The second one looks at the enthalpy of formation of carbon dioxide. And the third, the enthalpy of formation of glucose. Now, how do we use this information in order to try and uh, work out what we're going to do in this whole process of photosynthesis? Well, the first thing that we do, as we did with the previous uh, video, is we look at what are the desired reactants and which side are they already on. And what you notice um, is, firstly, equation one has water as a product. We want water as one of our reactants. Incidentally, we also have um, two moles of water. We need six. So what we have to do is we're going to have to multiply this by three to get the two to a six, but we're also going to have to reverse. And as we said before, when we reverse, we're going to have to reverse the sign. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is to rewrite this particular equation as 6H2O. So this is the change that we've made to equation one is going to be 6H2O liquid uh, going to 6H2 gas and 3O2 gas and a delta H value over here, which is now going to be equal to plus because the sign has changed and 1714.8 kilojoules per mole. Obviously, we're changing things around over here, so we're just looking at the kilojoules at the moment. The second equation is also not written the way we want it to be. We want the carbon dioxide to uh, be over here on the reactant side. We also want six um, uh, carbon dioxides. So therefore, our next equation is going to have to also be reversed, but multiplied by six and reversed. So therefore, that's going to bring equation two into this form. Six CO2 gas. Uh, goes to um, 6C solid uh, plus 6O2 gas. And the delta H value for this one is equal to um, plus 
0.61 kilojoules. We'll remove the per mole because obviously we're now uh, not looking at per mole anymore. We're now looking at the total kilojoules. Uh, the third equation actually has our glucose molecule uh, as it's written. And so therefore it's good. We're happy with that the way it is. So I can just transfer 6C solid 6H2 gas uh, 3O2 gas going to uh, C6 H12 O6 solid and the delta H value here is minus 1271 kilojoules. Now what I need to do is I need to look at my common factors. Now uh, because I've got a limited space on the slide it's really nice if you can keep all of these in line with one another just as you would with equal signs in mathematics and that makes it easier for you to say the six carbons are on either side of the arrow. The six hydrogens are actually on either side of the arrow even though they look like they're one under the other. Um, and what I have is three oxygens here and three oxygens here. So I can cancel those out as well. What you see I have then is 6H2O liquid, which is here, plus 6CO2 gas, which is here. Nothing left on the left-hand side, so I now can put my arrow. And on the right-hand side I have C6H12O6 solid, which is here and 6O2 gas, which is here. This is my equation for photosynthesis. I've now reformed it. And of course, in order to work out the delta H value, I need to add each of these together. And when I add each of these values together, what I find is I end up with a total of 28, a delta H value of plus 2804, give or take, uh, 4.8, I'll put it in kilojoules. Uh, and this, is a positive value which means it's an endothermic reaction we have to put energy in in order for this process to occur and that makes sense because sunlight is a very important component of the photosynthesis reaction this is complex it's still an application of hess's law but again it's probably going to take a little practice for you to uh, master it so uh, work hard at it keep doing plenty of practice and thanks for watching